Chelsea here from So Simple Home. Today's project is a boxy zipper tote. Um, I really like this project. It's super useful. It's a nice size tote and it has a really easy zipper. You can kind of roll the sides down of your tote and access whatever you might want like say a bunch of pencils, makeup, whatever you would want. And then it has these nice little tabs on the side as well as a little handle to help you access your tote a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and make this box tote or box pouch. So what you're gonna need, um, we have a pattern that you can download from our website. Um, it includes the uh, pattern for the tote as well as for the tabs and for the handle. Um, if you don't want to do that, uh, our dimensions are about 13 by 9 um, and then we're cutting out about a 2 inch block. Um, so you double that so it's like 4 something. Anyway, so we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. But we're going to go ahead and cut our fabric. So for this project the original tote that I did, I just did two layers. I did my main fabric and my lining and then I did a, a fusible interfacing on the inside of the main fabric. For this project, we are actually going to use some batting. So I have my lining fabric here and my main fabric which is this really pretty floral print. And then I have my batting. And my batting is actually already cut out, so I don't need to worry too much about that. But I'm going to fold my fabrics in half, and then I'm going to place my pattern on the fold so that I get the right amount here. And then I'm just going to cut it out. So I'm using my really sharp scissors and I'm trimming all the way around my pattern through all of my layers. Alright, my main fabric and my lining are all cut out using my pattern. And then I also have this layer of batting that I've cut out. Now the next thing I need to do is I'm going to cut out my tab and my um, handle. So I have this uh, little piece of fabric here, or excuse me, little pattern here. And I'm going to use just this small piece of um, leftover material from my pink material. And I need two of these and I think I can actually get two if I fold this material in half. Just about right. I'm going to trim the extra off here. Now, for this pattern, you can do two tabs. I did two here. And a handle, or you could leave off the handle and just do the tabs, or you could do one tab and a handle. It's totally up to you. But if you're going to do the tabs and the handle, you just need two of these. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. 
So let's go ahead and um, sew our tabs and our handle. So I'm just going to fold this in half lengthwise and stitch out a quarter of an inch seam allowance here. Oops, still got mine on zigzag. I'm going to go ahead and sew my handle and my tabs so they're all ready to go. So I'm going to turn them right sides together, matching the long side. I'm going to put my, them in my machine at a quarter of an inch and stitch. Back stitching at the beginning and the end. Do the second one here. So I have my tabs here and my handle. So if you're doing two tabs, you just need one of these because we're actually going to cut this in half when we're done and that'll be your two tabs and then your handle. So I'm just going to take my safety pin here and I'm going to turn my pieces right side out with my safety pin. If you have a bodkin or some other me better method than using a safety pin, go ahead and use that method as well. And I'm just quickly turning these right side out. They're nice and short so they don't take too much effort to turn right side out. All right. And then I'm just going to take my little easy press here, my easy press mini, which is like one of my favorite sewing tools because I can use it right here on my sewing machine. And I'm just going to press these. <coughs> Excuse me. I can get this guy all the way out here. And just press these nice and flat. Nothing special, just flat. All right, now one of these is going to be my tabs. So what I'm going to do is fold it in half and cut. So now I have two tabs and then I have one handle. The thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my batting down and then I'm going to put my lining fabric over my batting. You could do it the opposite way. You could put your uh, main fabric and then your line, whatever you want to do. Then I have my zipper. This is my uh, 14 inch zipper. Let's make sure. This might be 16 inches. I might take measure here. If I can do it the right way. Ooh, this is a 17 inch zipper. Okay, you really would only need about 14 inches because this is 13 and a half inches wide. Um, Maybe a 15 inch zipper if you want to be more comfortable. It's kind of up to you. So I'm going to take my zipper and put it across the top. Now this is the top of my zipper. You see this is the top. So I want the bottom of my zipper to line up with the raw edge here. And then I'll put the top, I'll put my main fabric down, right sides together, matching where the zipper is. Okay, you see how I'm doing that? So my main fabric is here. I'm putting all the raw edges together. All the raw edges together. So the raw edge of the main fabric, the raw edge of the zipper, the raw edge of the lining, the raw edge of the batting. I'm lining them all up together because we're going to sew all them together. Okay. So that's the top. The bottom, nothing, right? We're not doing anything. We're just doing the top right now. 
Now, if you have a zipper foot for your sewing machine, you're gonna to wanna to put your zipper foot on. That's gonna make things a lot easier. You're gonna change the position of your needle. So it's all the way over to the left. Um, I can't find my zipper foot, I'll be honest. I'm using a different machine because my other machine needs to go to the shop. I have no idea where the zipper foot is. So I'm using my regular foot, but I'm doing the same thing. I've put my needle all the way over so it's out of the way. It will work just fine, okay? So now I'm just gonna sew. So this is the middle of my zipper. See, here's my teeth. I'm sewing as close to my teeth as I can get and through all my layers. As close as I can get to those teeth without actually sewing them. I don't wanna sew on the teeth. That's a bad thing because then my zipper won't open or close. So, not hard at all. This is just a regular old zipper. Nothing special. And I've just sewn along the edge here. So now let's open it up so you can see. Here's my main fabric. Here's my lining and my batting. Here's where my zipper is. Perfect. Now if you have a zipper foot, you would, could get a lot closer to this than what I've gotten, but it's gonna work both ways. All right, now this is the weird part, okay? So I have my zipper. It opens, that's what I want. But I want my main fabric to come up here and line up with this zipper. The, the opposite side of the zipper, okay? And then I want my lining fabric, so I'm just gonna put this underneath. I'm gonna pull my lining and batting up to match where that zipper is. Can you see that here? So they're just matching up. So I'm matching the, the three layers with the zipper, the opposite side of the zipper. And again, I want all my raw edges together all of them together so that I can sew as close to the zipper as I can get without issues. And if that means you have to kind of adjust where your fabric is, that's just fine. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. So now the opposite side of the zipper is going to get sewn. We've already sewn this side. Now we're sewing this side. Same thing. I'm putting it in my machine and backstitch, trying to stay as close to that zipper as I can without sewing over it. All my layers are together. Okay. Now I've sewn my zipper in. That was not nearly as hard as you thought, was it? Zippers are surprisingly easy. You just gotta be brave. All right, so now I have my top and my lining. And it all looks really strange. But now we're gonna put our side seam in. Okay, so this is this seam right here. We're gonna stitch this seam. So to do that, we're gonna kind of open up our material, so it kind of looks like this. We're going to do the same thing with our top. And we want it to be even. So we want all of this even. So I have my main fabric, my top fabric, and my zipper. And then I have my lining fabric and it's all stacked together. And this is always a good time to pull your fabrics apart away from your zipper. Because <laughs> I don't want to sew, I don't want this fabric to come over on top of my zipper. All right, so that's kind of what it looks like. It's very odd looking. 
So now I'm going to take my tabs. And like I said, you can do two tabs or you can do one tab. I'm just going to do one tab this time. I did two tabs on this bag, but I didn't really need a tab on the front here because I have this but you could keep the tab on the front. It's totally up to you, but this time I'm just gonna switch it up. So instead of putting a tab where the top of the zipper is, I'm just gonna put a tab on the back. So I've taken my tab, I folded in half here, and I'm just gonna place it with a little bit of fabric going over the top, right in the middle of the zipper, right there. So it's going through all these layers, okay? My tab's gonna go through all the layers, or uh, my pin's gonna go through all the layers. So I've got my main fabric, my tab, my zipper, my lining. Now on this side where my actual zipper is, I'm gonna open my zipper so it comes a few inches into the, the zipper pouch. And then I'm gonna slightly overlap the teeth of my zipper pouch. And then I'm gonna pin it. I want these to be slightly overlapped because I want them, the zipper to stay in place. And so I'm gonna use a pin to try and keep them um, in position. Now, if it doesn't work out, you'll just end up like with a little gap down here, and that's fine too. But I'm gonna try. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this side seam. So I'm just gonna put it in my machine. So forward and back. I'm at about a quarter of an inch seam allowance, maybe just slightly above that. Pull my pins out. And now I've sewn all those layers together. Okay, so you can see all these layers are all together. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. This is the side that has the tab. I trimmed off and if I my zippers on the sides here. So I am ready to turn this bag right side out. So to do that, I'm just going to pull my material through, just like this. Looks a little wonky. I'm gonna unzip my zipper. And here is my lining and my fabric. So that's kind of what it looks like stretching things out just a little bit. Now it's not all gonna line up perfectly yet because we haven't done these um, corner boxes yet. But before we do that, we are going to put on our handle. So we have this cute little handle here. And it should be about the same width as your actual seam. So here's that side seam we've sewn. And your handle should be about the same width, maybe just slightly larger. And you're just gonna pin it with the raw edges right on the, the edge, like this. So there's just a little bit of a gap. You can see that here with this one. It's just a little bit wider than your bag. That's what you want. And then we're just gonna stitch these. Now, the thing you wanna be careful of is you don't wanna stitch your lining pieces together. So on the inside, I have this part of my lining and then this part of my lining. So I wanna make sure that this is open. I don't even know if you can see that, but this is open and I'm not accidentally sewing um, things together. So just make sure it's nice and open. And then you can just do a simple little basting stitch here to keep your um, handle on. Just a little, just a little basting stitch. It doesn't have to be 
anything major. It's just going to keep that handle in place because we're going to be moving those corners around quite a bit. All right, I got my handle in. This is kind of what it looks like right now. We're going to turn it inside out. This is the inside of my bag. And we're going to kind of push all those edges out. All right, so we're going to sew our box now, our box corners. So this is the part that's always tricky for people. So we are going to take, here's our corner. We're going to take this corner of the box and this corner of the box and match them. So this corner and this corner, and we're going to put them together like so. And it makes kind of this edge here, as you can see. Now, I'm going to be honest, a lot of times with projects like these, they don't match up super perfectly. And that's all right. So we're going to just stitch down where this box is. We're going to try and do it with as much precision as we can. Because if we don't, then our box or our, our pouch isn't going to be even, right? This side will be way higher than this side or, or whatnot. And that's fine, but probably not what you want. So it does take a little bit. All right, so we got this side here. Now we're going to do this one over here. So we're going to lay it flat. We're going to take this corner and the seam going to put them together like so and we're going to stitch okay two down two to go so this is the first side you can kind of see how that looks on the inside and we'll trim these down and we'll um, pink them as well. So now we're going to do this side over here. So this corner and this corner come together and stitch. One more. Last one here. All right. All our four of our corners are sewn. Everything looks pretty even. So that's good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well there's two, there's a couple choices. Um, you can use pinking shears. So I can take my little pinking shears here and I can cut through all the layers and pink, uh, use it as a, uh, my seam finish with pinking shears. We'll go ahead and do this one too. Try and be a little evening, even. Um, this is not necessarily the best choice because there's a lot of layers to go through with your pinking shears. And so that can be hard. Um, the other thing you can do is you can trim. So we'll trim this side. And we'll trim this side over here. And then we're going to set our machine on a zigzag and we'll put a nice zigzag as our seam finish for this side. And that'll be our seam finish for the opposite side. But you do want to finish those seams so that they don't fray and unravel. All right, are you ready to turn the right side out? So we're gonna push 
all our corners out. And then this side, push our corners out. Okay. And at the top, push our corners out. Kind of even things up. And there it is. How cute is that? Such a handy little zipper pouch that can hold quite a bit. I mean, you can put your lunch in here. <laughs> uh, but you can also turn it like this. I kind of showed you that at the beginning. So if you are using it and you want to access things constantly, you can kind of open it up a little bit so that you can access whatever's in your pouch. But that's how you make a boxy pouch. Now this one's pretty large. The finished measurements, let's look here. Let me push this corner out because it's driving me nuts here. Um, the finished measurements, let's see. We're at about, I would say about seven and a half inches by four and a, three-fourths. Seems about right. So that's a nice size little pouch that can hold an awful lot of treasures. Great for traveling, putting your makeup in, you can make it as a shaving kit, um, you can put toys in it, you could store your snacks, you could make it a lunch box, um, you can carry it this way if you have a nice sturdy handle. But that's how you make a boxy zipper pouch. If you have questions or comments, please leave them down in the comment area and make sure you check out the description so you can download the free pattern and we'll see you all next time.